Hi, this is Will Beamer with the Hartwood School and in this video today I'm going to show you how to efficiently create a timber frame model using various tips, techniques, and tools that we can bring into SketchUp. On the screen you see a 12 by 16 timber frame and three axes the blue axis is vertical, the green and the red axis are horizontal and 90 degrees to each other. It's a little easier to see if I orbit around the model here. So what we're going to do is create a footprint which is this gray box down here on the bottom, a plan view of our building and one of the great things about SketchUp is that when you bring in objects or create objects they will jump lock to the various corners of the grid and the other objects so it's very easy to align objects precisely what I'm going to do is uh, after this footprint is created is bring in a post from my component library which is over here on the right and I'm not going to get into making components in this video, but it's a very important uh, process. Uh, once I have these timbers created with their joinery, I can put them in a library and bring them in uh, ready-made. After I place that post, I'm going to duplicate it and bring it over to the other side of the building here and make it a mirror image of this one over here. I'll bring in the tie beam and place it. I'll bring in the brace and put it on this side of the bent and then I will duplicate it and make a mirror image of it over on this side of the bent. And once I have these five pieces in place I will duplicate them and bring them down the line here to create two more bents and this bent on the end down here will be a mirror image of this bent because we want our timbers to be flush to the exterior of the building, especially our braces, which are narrower than the other timbers. After that's done, I'm going to bring in the plate, which is what the rafters sit on, bring in another copy of the brace here, and make a mirror image of it and duplicate it down the line so I have four braces going into the plate. When that is done I will duplicate and make a mirror image of this group here over on the other side to create the plate and braces on the other side. Then I'll bring in two rafters, a mortised rafter and a tendon rafter and place them on the end here and then I'll duplicate an array to make them evenly spaced down the building. So let's get started and show you some of the tools and techniques we can use to do this in the most efficient manner possible. I'm going to get rid of this model and start creating a new one. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab my rectangle tool over here on the left and I'm going to uh, you see how it jumps to the corner of my axes here, my grid, and I'm just going to pull out a rectangle holding down my button on the mouse and that rectangle can be any size and if you look down here on the right you'll see what size it is and one great technique is that I can just enter my dimensions 12 feet comma 16 feet and hit enter and it will create a 12 by 16 rectangle for me. So entering dimensions is the most efficient way of uh, creating things to a particular size and I'm going to select this entire rectangle and I'm going to make it a component just like my timbers are components I'm going to call that the plan. One thing about SketchUp is, is that when you create an object and bring another object in 
and it sticks to it, those objects become one object. By creating a component, this object is now discrete and can be moved and modified without affecting any other components that are touching it. So we pretty much make components immediately for all of our uh, different objects that we're placing in here so that we can move them around without affecting other objects. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go over to my component library and select a corner post and I'm dragging it by that lower corner and I'm going to put it right over here. You see how it wants to just jump right to the intersection of the axes in the corner of my plan. And as I said, I created these components earlier and stored them in my library. And if I double click on that, I can see the various subcomponents within this larger component. And that is includes a, a solid timber in the middle and a joint on each end. And this joint uh, tenon on the top is oriented to the outside of the building. Now, if I just duplicate that uh, post and bring it over to the other side, and there's a number of ways I can duplicate something, I can hit the Move tool and hold down my Option key and create a copy of it. But I don't want it to be an exact copy because I want my tenon to be oriented to the outside of the outside of the building. So instead we use a very handy plugin called the mirror tool. And I'm going to use this throughout this demonstration. And it makes it very quick to create a copy and a mirror image in exactly the right place. I'm going to select this post right click go down here to my plugin which says mirror selection and I'm going to find the midpoint of this floor plan you see how there's a dot that appears when I get close to the midpoint of my floor plan and I can create two axes I come up holding down the mouse button on the blue axis and then I go out on the green axis and this creates three points, and three points creates a plane. And if I let go, it creates a mirror image of that post exactly the same distance away from that midpoint going the other direction, which is where I want the other post. So this is a very handy trick. I don't want to erase my original selection, so I'm going to click No. Then I'm going to bring in the uh, tie beam and I'm going to place the tie beam here at uh, some height, it doesn't really matter what, on my uh, posts. It's already the correct length. And then I'm going to bring in a brace. And I want to put the brace down in this corner going from the post to the tie beam. However, I need to rotate it, so I'm going to collect, select my Rotate tool, go out here on the green axis, rotate it over 90 degrees. I could also type in 90 down here in the box on the lower right. I'm going to then move the brace up, and it will glue to my other component and the brace goes into a half-inch housing into the post and the tie beam. Uh, I won't explain why we do that, but it uh, will create an extra line here that we'll get rid of later. And then I'm going to mirror that brace over to the other side to create a mirror image of it going into the other post. So I right-click mirror selection, find the midpoint here, go up on the blue axis, click once, go out on the green axis, and it creates a mirror image on the other side in exactly the right place. 
no, I don't want to erase the original selection. Okay, so there's my first bent. Now I want two more bents duplicated down the um, down the rest of the floor plan. So I'm going to select all five of these objects. I'm going to mirror it down to the other end of the building around the midpoint of the floor plan going in this direction. So I'm going to right click, set mirror selection, find the midpoint here, go up on the blue axis. This time I'm going to go over on the red axis to create my plane. And there is the mirror image of this bent down on the other end of the building. I want one more bent in the middle and this time I don't want to mirror it. I want it to be the same uh, layout face because it's an interior bent. I want it to be the same layout face as my first bent. So I'm going to collect or select all three, all five of these objects. And I'm going to hold down my move key with my option key. You see a little plus sign appears next to the move sign. I can come to the midpoint of this bent and drag it down until it locks to the midpoint of the other uh, floor plan, the midpoint of the floor plan. So now I have my uh, three bents. using the mirror tool and the move tool. Now it's time to add the plate. I'm going to bring the plate in. Uh, it needs to be rotated to go across the tops of the three posts. There's these little red uh, crosses here that can be automatically used to rotate a piece. I can rotate it to any direction, type in 90, and it will go at 90 degrees to its orientation when it came into the model. I'm going to bring it up here, put it up here on the top of the posts. Again, the post is going to go into a half-inch housing in the plate. Now I'll bring in a brace, and the brace again will stick to the to the plate. That's where I want it to be. So I can now make a copy of this brace. I can do this a number of ways. I can select the uh, mirror tool come here to the midpoint of my model, go up on the blue axis, out on the red axis, and it will create a mirror image exactly the same distance away from that midpoint, going the other direction. I can now take this brace, select my move tool with a um, plus sign, and bring that brace along on the green axis to create a, another brace there. Select this one, move with my plus tool, and move this along. You see that as I'm moving it, it'll tell me when I'm on the, on the green axis. Actually, if I hold down the shift key, it'll lock me to the green axis. And there's my plate with four braces. Now I'm going to select that plate and these four braces and duplicate a mirror image of it over to the other side. I'm going to right click mirror selection, go to the midpoint here, go up on the blue axis over on the green axis. No, I don't want to erase the original. And there is the plate with the braces on the other side. Now we're going to add our rafters. 
and I'm going to set myself up some guidelines here. I'm going to take my protractor tool and bring it over here, and put it on the corner of the plate, and come out on the red axis and rotate up a line and click once and immediately go down to the angle text box down here and input 12 colon 12 to create a 12 12 pitch. I'm going to come up here and do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to go out on the red axis, rotate up any angle, immediately type in 12 colon 12 and there I have a 12 12 pitched roof coming off the corners of the plates and if I go up here and look at the end view I go up here to one of these little houses in the in the view box you'll see the 12 12 uh, roof guides. Now I'll bring in a rafter I'm going to place that rafter on the top of the plate here and I'm going to rotate that rafter up to 12-12 12 12 colon 12 enter and I'm going to rotate down here a little bit so you can see better what's going on I'm going to move that rafter up to the top of the plate. This is what we call a step lap rafter seat. And I know that that corner wants to be right at the top of the plate, and then we're going to bring it out so that its top of the rafter is flush right to the arras or the corner of the plate. I'll bring in another rafter. In this case, it's a tenon rafter. I need to rotate it around. So I'm going to rotate it 180. Place it on the top of my plate. Rotate it, rotate it up to uh, 12, 12. And then I'm going to take this corner of the notch, put it on the top of the plate, and then grab this outside corner and move it out until it locks. Okay, so there we have our two rafters, and you see this one rafter is a little bit short. So I'm going to select the rafter that's a little bit short, and I'm going to use another tool. If I go up here to Extensions, I see something called the TF Rubies. This is an, these are other plugins that you can download at the Extensions Warehouse. And you see that there's a tool called the Timber Frame Stretch Tool. And this is a very handy tool because I can extend a timber component without stretching the joinery that's attached to it. So I'm going to take this corner and drag it up until it meets the other timber or this guideline. It looks like my first rafter has moved a little bit here somehow, so I'm going to bring it out. And now you see that our rafters are aligned to our guides. I need to stretch this one just a little bit more. Right there. Okay, so there is my set of rafters.
I'm now going to duplicate those down the line. I'm going to get rid of my guides or hide the guides. I'm going to select both rafters, duplicate them down to the other end of the building by hitting the Move tool, holding down the Option key, grabbing this outside edge here, and moving them down to the other end. Now, if I, before I do anything else, when I let go of that, if I want to divide that up into five equal spaces, I can hit the divide line. If you look down at the lower right, I can hit slash five and hit return, and it automatically gives me five bays equally spaced between the end rafters. So there you have it. There's our model. Now two other tools that we'll talk about very briefly here. One is the show pegs tool. Each of the joints that I created in my component, if I bring over a brace you'll see it. This brace has a peg hole in the in the joint. And that's made with a tool we call create pegs. I'm going to get rid of that brace. If I go up here to my timber frame rubies again and select uh, show pegs, my pegs show up wherever there was a joint created and the peg hole installed on the joint. Now just a, one more thing. The, we've got some extra lines here that we need to get rid of where the timbers go into their housing. And to get rid of that and to create the mortise on the other side, you see if I take this brace out, I've got the tenon on the other side. But if I bring the post out, there is no mortise created for these joints. So there's a couple of ways you can create the mortises. The way that I use is with something called the solid tools, which are up here in the uh, tools menu. These are only available in the pro version of SketchUp. And there's something called the subtract tool here. And one way that I can uh, create the mortise is to take my component and explode it into its solid timber here and then take the brace and copy the tenon command C on a Mac and then I'm going to paste in place there's a under the edit menu there's something called paste in place and if I select that item and then the solid timber that I've exploded out of my post component. In order for the subtract tool to work, you need to have two solids. And this solid is, I needed to bring it out of the main post component in order for this to work. If I go up here to my tools, solid tools, subtract, now you see that that line has disappeared and if I select this post and move it away, you'll see that the mortise has appeared. And this works with all my, all my joinery. If I go up here to my tie beam and I explode it or edit it, select the dovetail tie beam, the dovetail joint, on the end of the tie beam, copy it, paste in place, shift select to create my second solid, the post, and select my solid tool subtract. Now I've 
created the mortise there. The wedge is a separate component. I'm going to copy it. Oops, sorry. I'm going to uh, copy it, paste in place, and subtract after I select the other post. And now, if I move this away, you'll see that the wedge dovetail mortise has been created as well. So those are some of the tricks we use to create a timber frame model. You can find more information on the Hartwood School website and more videos. Thanks.